put our mobile phones on the silent mode, please. Okay, on that note, I'll ask that we invoke the presence of God Almighty uh, for this meeting. If the people are silent, prayer, please. Amen. Amen. I'd like to welcome you to the National Weekly Press Briefing at the Ministry of Information and Communication. As usual, we'll begin with the updates for today. And after that, uh, we'll, that will take us into the presentation. We were expecting really the Minister of Finance uh, for a medium uh, press conference today. And uh, it was to speak on economic issues. But uh, because of other official engagements, he could not make it to this press briefing. And also, as I informed you during the course of the week, that um, the 19th of August this year will be the World Photography Day. And so as such, we'll be uh, giving you key highlights of what that particular event uh, will be and how it will be commemorated in Sierra Leone. So on this note, I think I'm going to play a dual role here. Chair at the same time presents. So um, let's begin with the weekly news briefs. Following a two day harmonization workshop from the 10th to the 11th of August 2021 to bring together different stakeholders aimed at enhancing and understanding on the integration of the African Peer Review Mechanism APRM National Plan of Action into Sierra Leone's National Development Plan for easier implementation of the report's recommendation and achievements of socio-economic development, the Honorable Vice President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Dr. Mohamed Julia Jalo, has today officially launched the targeted review report on Sierra Leone's health governance and COVID-19 response at the Binti Mali Conference Center Abadin in Prita. The governor of the Bank of Sierra Leone has in a public notice issued yesterday announced that the country's legal tender, the Leone, shall be re-denominated by the removal of the three last zeros from the face value of the said legal tender. The announcement for the states that the current legal tender shall continue to remain in force until such time and date that the Bank of Sierra shall by public notice designate. The Minister of Internal Affairs, Mr. David Pandanoa, and the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Ambassador Tamba Lamina, and other senior officials for both ministries have settled a long-standing boundary dispute between two chiefdoms in the Kwenadugu and Tonkoli districts. The Minister of Lands, Housing and Country Planning, Dr. Churat Senesi, has on Tuesday returned from a successful trip from Ghana in a bid to promote President Bill's agenda for affordable housing. Dr. Jurat Senesi was in Accra over the weekend on an invitation of one of Ghana's biggest real estate developers, JL Properties, to ascertain the company's readiness to invest in Sierra Leone. The Minister of Transport and Aviation, Kabine Kalo, has warned all stakeholders in the transport sector to duly follow the agreed proportionate public transportation fares within the Freetown municipality and the provinces. 
He made his statement during his stakeholder engagement meeting on the recent fuel, fuel increment in the country. And lastly, the Minister of Information and Communications, Mr. Mohamed Roman Swari, has led a team of other professionals in the communications sector, which includes NATCOM and SARPOL, to attend uh, the 27th session of the Universal Postal Union Congress in Abidjan, the capital of Ivory Coast. Those were news briefs for this week that uh, makes uh, uh, highlights for the week. And now for our presentation for today, I know it would interest you the most uh, to know that this is the first time Sierra Leone is joining other countries around the world to observe what we call the uh, World Photograph Day. Um, really, if the Minister of Finance was here, we were to do the presentation concurrently, but in his absence, I have to also step in to do my own bit. So I'll now bring you this presentation because it's the first time. We need to know why we are commemorating this day and why is it significant to Sierra Leone. Um, World Photography Day will be observed in Sierra Leone on the 19th of August and um, we'll discuss the theme for this day, the importance of it in commemorating it in Sierra Leone and why as at this time it is recognized that we as Sierra Leoneans observe this day. So I'll begin with the introduction by saying that the World Photograph Day is celebrated every other year on the 19th of August. And this day is an exclusive celebration of photographs history. For those of us that have gone through mass home, I needn't die late much on the history of photography from the camera, oscura camera, the pinhole camera, onto this digital age. So I'm just uh, giving you a synopsis of how it started its evolution onto this uh, digital stage. And so we see the technological trend as we move from the Oscura camera, where we used to see photographers carrying an umbrella with a view to covering their heads for uh, proper light, etc., to this technological age that we are. So um, why are we celebrating this day? Like I said, the first photographic process was developed by Louis. He's a French uh, guy. He's called Louis de Gaulle. Um, he was a proponent of photography. And Louis, when he created or invented the photographic machine, if you go back into its history, other pe people picked up from him. But he started by designing or drawing, you know, as a, a system. And from that, he started uh, developing a machinery that can replicate, you know, that is. Uh, the word is a photo and fuse or uh, feeling is drawing from light. So which means using light to draw an object. So this day, because of this discovery, it was necessary to pass on to generations yet unborn. So in the era of SDG, as we say, we needed to deplete the environment because we, we, other people are coming. If we deplete them, those coming after us, we have nothing to talk about. I say we've seen extinction of certain things. So to maintain this field of um, photography, there is need to observe this day so that new inventions that are coming up can be recognized as well. So um, the 19th of August of every year is celebrated as World Photography Day. 
And if you go to the website and uh, try to find out more about things, for this year, the, the thing for this whole program has been left to respective countries to adapt their or adopt their own thing that will enhance the work in promoting photography. Later on, I'll come to explain the relevance and how that enhances our work as journalists, and it's good for us to embrace a photography. So the film for this year we selected at Senegal Youth, I mean joining other countries to celebrate. Though Photographers Union, who are here with us, I will introduce the executive, the nationwide executive. They've been observing it in a low key. But this time, working with the ministry, uh, they think it should be a wider celebration that should be recognized. So we decided to make, looking at uh, the current trend of the pandemic in the world, we say it's going to be COVID-19 through the lens. One is tempted to ask, probably it's a bit philosophical, or we need to expound on it, but what we are saying, how do we use photograph to tell the story? How do we use photograph with a view to educating people. How do we use photographs for remembrance of this pandemic in the country? So, because of the relevance or significance of photograph, we've seen it that at this era, we need to have a theme we say COVID-19 through the lens. Who started uh, World Photography Day? Like I said, the World Photography Day first came into being on account of the intervention of this French uh, expert, Derebouli. And the French government was the first to publicize this invention. They didn't keep it to themselves. So you find out that if you go into the history, you see how the Chinese came into it, how Italians and the British also came into it. Now, for, let me come now and contextualize in our own case in Sierra Leone why we should observe this day and why is it important to us. Now, from research that I've, I've done and from other research, we find out that if you could recall, even for print and electronic media, it was way back in the 1800s that we had the first digital bank machine here that other countries use Sierra Leone as a springboard to come and practice journalism. So we had a printing press here, now we don't have some of the relics of these machines. So if you go back into that era, when such publications were taking place, we had people that were doing what we call artistic work. Because photography was not at that time, you know, and as in this part of our world, people draw to show what has happened? So from um, 1839, when this uh, machine was uh, established as photographic machine, we see the black and white uh, uh, camera coming up, which was uh, we call point and shoot. You know, the point and shoot camera. So since that time, we see uh, people dis making discovery of how to use it. And if you go back to research, you see it was very, very interesting. And the procedure to get those films was very difficult. Uh, when you go to the, the, the studio to snap, you will meet as fluorescent bulbs as over 20, 50, just to give the, the exact lightning density that they need within that studio. There was no flash as at that time when it started. No flash. So when you go in a photo studio, you see all types of light there in that studio that makes it as bright as day, so that the, the sensitive material it we call film in the camera can write on that sensitive material. So at the end of the day, that was what was processed to a liquid, right? A basement of a liquid that was washed. At the end of the day, they say they can develop the dignity. You have to wait for it to dry because it was done in a dark room. And all of these processes was cumbersome. So if you snap today, you will not get it until a few days after, before they come with a black and white photo. So from research, we see that while it was introduced in Africa way back, like I said, in 1889, cameras were restricted or limited to those who can procure it. It was very expensive as at that time. So that's why popular photographers had their studios. In fact, when you have ceremonies passed, you go book 
Fole Ihibu can't cover because there were no millions at that time. So when we do research into that, West Africans took up the, the profession of photography and some were highly success, uh, successful. But you see, the challenge I would like also to show to members uh, of this team. Some of you went through photojournalism in your various institutions. Up to now, we don't have researchers who can go into our history of Sierra Leone like other countries who were successful photographers. Name me them if you know. So we need to go back into our history to check who are those that started photography and how successful were they. If you check uh, on Google, look at uh, Samiti Magai's first cabinet. The first minister of information was one CC, but up to now we cannot get a photograph. And even as at that time, you see it's like a portrait of Samiti, a very old black and white. If you see the old free time, it was in the black and white. So observing this day is telling us the evolution from that time to now, how it has evolved. So it's very important to conduct such research. I'll give you another scenario where photography was uh, significant in Sierra Leone. The postcards we were using. How many of us have seen postcards? I mean, in our post office, that was the center for the sale of postcards, if you may recall. That was, even our stamps, the airmail that we used to send, these were all products of photographs after it has been established in our country. If we go to the history, it started with the point I showed the black and white, the old square camera, and with time we started getting Kodak, huh? the Kodak machine, and later we got the automatic that we use now, you yeah. just remove Polaroid. and blow it up. Polaroid. Yeah, Polaroid all came into being. This was innovation from the first uh, uh, part of it. So now postcards were things that were helping us also to market. So when I come to the various sectors in photography, you will see that commercial photography was prominent as at that time. So um, you will see photos of the cutting tree, you will see beautiful uh, birds, you will see uh, the beaches, you will see some beautiful places, uh, state house, etc. That was how photographs started in Sierra Leone. But we are yet to find out who is or who was the most prominent amongst them and how successful those people are. We need to get a database. So this is why you find out that the Ministry of Information cannot work in silo. And under my directorate, I have what I call the audiovisual unit. Those of you who may recall the AYB where it is situated, that used to be the production uh, place for uh, photos for government. That was our photographic department. So our work here under the current dispensation is to revamp or revitalize some of these activities. So photographers in Sierra have seen them as key partners. This is why you see them here with us today. Because if I want to make history of those photographs, I have to go back to their archives. And most of them have lost even data of those films we are using. Now you are using CCD in your respective phones. Uh, do you know what CCD means? Eh? The common uh, device. Eh? You will like to call us on Sunday memory card. That's the advanced one. But what we had before was the film. And it depends on the film speed. We had film speed of variances. Sorry, I'm not lecturing it anyway, but just to bring your memory to that. Things were categorized. You have that one for sporting activities. You have those ones for slow motion. And even the manual camera, you will see uh, how it functions. So the reason why we are partnering with the Sierra Leone uh, uh, Union of Photographers is for us to bring back life to history using what they already had for us to establish a proper documentary. If you go in the MDAs, they tell you, they, so they, they don't even get the picture of the first president. I don't even hear. Or the prime minister. Not where. So the only time you can get, the, the only place you can get it now, except going through the archives, and even those machines, as at that time, which they used to, to wash with the chemicals, etc., some of them don't even have it. 
And there are no dark rooms now, for instance. It is some form of box. They put their hands into it, do it sensitively before our camera people will go into the dark room. Now, that's the important. So, but again, this is on the side of the photographers I've just spoken. What about us as journalists? Why is this day important to us? It is very important because picture serves some useful purposes for newspapers, and not only for newspapers now, it has moved one step when we look at the digital area. I mean, we have now 24 frames per second that has given us what we call video clips or footages. It was as a result of the first discovery in steel camera. That's from steel camera, it was developed to moving objects, right? That's from the history. So what we see now is that why do we use uh, photos for journalism? One is for what? Credibility. Any story you see now, for instance, uh, looking at the papers today, talking about my ministry, somebody with some headline there, uh, so far, push, they place the minister's face. But for a professional photographer, whatever picture you see see those that, whatever picture you place of somebody tells you exactly the mood and what is behind the story. Do you know that? Yeah. Ah, all right, we'll come to that. Then the visual appeal. I mean, visual appeal, like we all know, it's like a magnet. When you see somebody, say, hey, now this person is also make her also get her. You know, because it's attractive. And also, it's also for the issue of vital, uh, vitality. It adds life to vitality to, to the story that you are telling. And that means the information you are passing, it ignites somebody to action. It ignites somebody to think how lively that story is. The other thing is aesthetic. So it creates certain feeling in you. So the complete form of journalism in terms of writing cannot go without photos. So this aesthetics of the photos that we put there brings up aesthetics. And in that, we say they add color and illustration to our story. Pictures present the essence and the gist of our stories. They lay emphasis on silent aspect of the story. Whenever I, I watch photos on uh, media, or I look at the foreground and background. For those who are professionals, know what I'm saying. I look, when I cartoon people say, oh, you put somebody in photo, the story you want to tell will tell the environment that person is, or from the background, I can tell you that this was this. And that is how, we, for now, we, 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 we take the uh, identified fake, fake uh, uh, photos that are sent. We know the environment, we know where it is, then we can tell the story from that virtual perspective. And um, towards the end, they add variety and embellishment to our stories, they present entertainment angle of the story. These are all significant parts of the story. You can name it on and on and on. But in conclusion, I would say very importantly, pictures are vehicles of effective communication. So if you ask me why we are commemorating this day, I think say, we think now photographers are no longer necessary. Let's bring this up. We think our selfies are the best, but you cannot document. One day you fool us, all things don't go. And most of the selfies you do, you are not cognizant of the gradient, the impact of life, and all of that. Except a professional that deals with it and regulates it as it should be. Because there are two spares. You have the left spare and the right spare. The left sees the, the, the originality of what you are seeing, but the other eye tells you exactly how it should look when it's in a picture. From Naimi, you can see the lock wire, eye, they look inside. So you, are, you can see the world, how the camera sees it. But for us, with the selfie now and the advancement of it, most of us don't care about what is happening, but it tells a story. So we use them for newspapers, magazines, etc., to share information. And in summary, to end up, the vital function of pictures cannot be washed in the mud. No, no, overlook photography. They are key. You cannot be snapping yourself and making a speech like I'm doing now. Somebody has to operate the camera. And that person has to be a professional. 
and they have a lot of job to do and contribute in Sierra Leone. I give you an example for your national identity cards. If you don't have professional photographers, your face will be always blurred. Trust me. For our electoral process, we need them. For sitting wise, we need them. For college entrance, you need them. It's not selfie cameras, but we need professional cameras. That's why we have two types of cameras. We have pro-consumer and we have that of professionals. If you look at the sporting stadium and activities journalists cover, they have professional cameras with uh, uh, either short-range lenses or long-range lenses that can be regulated. So on this note, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to commemorate this day and the activities will take place in Otloko on the 18th and 19th. Members of the media are also welcome to attend and it's going to be under the auspices of the guests of honor, except uh, the honorable vice president, Dr. Mohamed Jubejan. It is going to attract all photographers around con the country being represented because of the COVID situation. They are going to be represented there. And we'll discuss the way forward of how we can make this job an enviable job and how it will help us document government uh, programs and events electronically and digitally. So on this note, I'll now throw the ball on, in your call. Uh, before that, let me allow the President of Photographers Union uh, to please introduce members of his team who are also here to meet with the press. Thank you very much, Mr. Turi, Director. I learned something special today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this day is very important. It's so important for us as photographers and also journalists. It inspired us to do more in terms of crit uh, creativity and professionalism. So the, the activities or the events is going to be hosted in Fuloko. We are in, we are going to bring there are going to be three of our members right across the region to Puloko. Um, we are going to start with a competition. The competition simply is that it's about COVID. Each and every member wants to go into that competition to provide five pictures. And there are conditions to those pictures. The mega pixels will be 300 to 600 because we have to enlarge them. We have formed the judges and they are now working on the pictures. So the entry is for 100 photographers across the country. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that we call up our uh, fellow journalists to toe the line in the celebration. Because one key issue we discussed in that uh, session after the, 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 the opening is about how we can enhance the work of journalists in Israel. I think. The, the whole lot of the, the, the session is that the photographers have been left out. There is a lot of news down in the villages, in the town, in the districts. But we have that potential. We have the membership around. How can we enhance? How can we work? But again, we must have to thank the, the, the SLAG executive. Because through the AGM meeting this year, we learned something. And that's what we are going to implement in Puloko. That is our membership drive. So the competition is very serious. We have five regional winners who will be contesting for the first prize, second prize, and third prize. I mean, the COVID through the lens is very important. We still have people talking about COVID, that COVID doesn't exist. There is no COVID. So we want to show the people the nation exactly what is happening to COVID. So those pictures will be in exhibition at the local uh, uh, city hall for a week after the celebration. Then we can make arrangement with the Ministry of Information to take these same pictures to another district because we want to move them around the 16 districts. So on that note, I want to thank you very much. I will now introduce my executive. Um, I have far from my left, Mr. Tennessee Kenyaba. 
he's the vice president. On the other side is Mr. Sullivan Kalon. He's the Secretary General. Mr. Ibrahim Dila, the Financial Secretary. Mr. Moses Kouma, who is the PRO. And myself, the National President, Stevie Alumi Mamumo. I thank you all. Thank you very much. Members of the Fourth Estate, we can ask uh, questions uh, or any comments, clarifications. Yes, thank you. Yes, well, you are at the back. I can see you. Make use of the back. Thank you very much, Mr. Kitchen. Um, to make our colleagues in the province to be better to grab to grab that. that that one has started since 2010. You know, we've gone a lot of training for our photographers around the country. We've monitored elections 2004, we've monitored elections 2007, we monitor elections 2012. All the training, I mean, as a photojournalist, to monitor the elections is about camera against violence. Like that one was a good training. I think that one has resonated in the minds of our membership across the country. And we are still, that is why we are pushing very hard to, to, be, to, to, be, to be united with our ministry, that is the Ministry of Information. You know, for quite a long, we have, we have gone away from the ministry because of other reasons. But I can assure you, after the celebration, we are going to get a better, better training for our membership. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, yeah. uh, asking about why we uh, carefully selected this theme of COVID. Like I started earlier on, I mentioned that we all know the current world trend today, our socio-economic development, government's agenda, uh, government's programs, etc., have been affected by the COVID pandemic. And looking at the current situation, we all know the state of affairs, whereas there is curfew, etc., and whereas also your act uh, normal activities, social activities, you cannot achieve them as a result of COVID. So we've looked at it also. It is time for us to tell stories around this issue of COVID. Like I mentioned, giving you what photograph is all about, it's not only about uh, uh, looking at yourself, giving yourself selfie, but even doing the selfie, there's a reason for that. One is for remembrance. Two, it's to show your status or condition that you have. Some of you even snap and say on Facebook that they are giving you drip. Before these things were secret, so man no one in the nose is saying sick. But now somebody is sick, you don't say a picture on like, like social media, but let the nose say sick. That is, you want people to know your status or what is happening with you. So COVID is a current situation. And we want to tell a story that is different uh, from what you are reading, rather, we want to tell the story from the eye. That is the eye view. 
Now, when some of you send photos on social media, you don't even send comments. Apart from the videos, you just snap. And because you have opportunity to snap, you just send. And I see sometimes good administrators say, what is this photo about? And I mentioned that photographs tell stories by themselves. If you don't tell us this is what you intend to depict, I will also tell you that you were trying to do ABC based on, like I told you, the foreground, the background, of what I see from that photo. So people interpret it the way they look at it. It tells a story of its own. So why we've selected uh, COVID? COVID is the current world issue. It's the current world problem. So we need to tell the story using our respective lenses, like you shooting now, getting footages. That's all our intention. And let me round up, uh, probably maybe there are not all the questions, to say I must commend the uh, Sierra Leone Union of Photographers. If you look at all previous governments, they have their membership at State House, at most of our MDs. Why do we have them? It's they are also complementing the work of government information services because we need professionals like them to have documentation. So this is why the very reason why we think we can bring them into the fold. And to tell you that also, photography is a profession. If you go to the Copyright Law Act, let me tell you, some of you snap nice selfies, but you don't claim ownership of them after you posted them on social media. I tell you, there are companies that are branding, like uh, Orange, uh, you name them, telcos here in this country, companies, if you get some nice shots, they will buy it from you at very expensive cost, and you, you, you go into an agreement for copyright ownership. But most of us don't know what we do. We snap nice photos. I recall the sunset somewhere around my clinic. I did a nice shot. Because I did accredit myself, set it up, somebody <coughs> gave it. I don't, I don't get ownership over it. When we come to commercial photography, you make huge sum of money. I know photographers who have houses now out of the camera, out of the lens. So that's why we are challenging all photographers. If you can tell the real story of COVID using your camera, you have a very nice and very beautiful prize. So that's it. Any other question? If there are none, then I, yes. The mic is closer to you. My name is Mary Jackson. I'm reporting for City Medical to you. And this is going to the president of the Photographer Association. And with the advent of sophisticated uh, phones, most of the members have raised concern. And the effect of these phones towards the truth. Let's have an example. And when you go to a wedding, a party, you will find out that even though they, they have already assigned to give somebody there is an assignment to do the to do the, 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 the snapshot. You will see uh, everybody coming in to take that particular shot. With that will affect and uh, the, the, the trim. So what if your association has done towards that in order to contain that particular situation? Thank you very much. Yeah. That's a very good question. Those are the major challenges we have had for the past five years through the films. But like I said earlier, that we'll be discussing these things in Poloco because we have these whole sections. We'll be dealing with the challenges we have in the phones. We'll be dealing with even the cyber crimes, seditious slider. These are part of, we are all part of this, this, this exercise that is going on. But far too long we have left behind. So we have to discuss uh, the issue. But to quick, quickly jump into that uh, 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 issue, you need to be a professional. Because taking photo with, uh, with, with, with the phone, just like earlier my, my director said, it's not safe. It's not safe. So if you are hired to do your coverage, just concentrate as a professional. You are not a mature or somebody who is carrying camera here, a professional, so concentrate on that. But equally also, you shall be taking resolutions on that. That will be the work of the, the ministry. We'll be taking resolutions that will pull up and they will present the document to the ministry. Thank you very much. Um, let me just add to that, you know, we will go on and on and on, and um, like I said, it's enhances the work of uh, journalism. 
Um, you're talking about photo ethics. It's a whole topic. That's why when we say it's a profession, photography is a profession. With all those ethical um, efforts you gain, or the ethics you've studied out of it, you become a professional. I've seen photographers in this country, they publish people's photos uh, outside, they don't pay me. Yeah. Huh? You've seen it? It's because they lack the education. If you are a professional, you will not do it. Because uh, there, there is something that will, will, will trample you uh, uh, legally if you do that to somebody. And also, you take photographs, probably your selfie, your personal photo, take it to uh, a lab to, 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 to work on it, and what do they do? They take that photo from you and establish elsewhere. If that happens, what, what then? So this is why the very reason why we are partnering with the, the, the Photographers Association or Union in the country to ensure my role as the Director of Information will be to draw up policies that will guide that industry. It's the same thing now we are doing for the film industry. We're still working on film policy and later that will inform the film act. We see a lot of people in the camera and also. You know, doing anything. And you see people within the country taking snapshots of everything. Some are spies. You may not know. So, but with the ethical standards that we are going to put in place, a consultation is going to be held. I guess we'll, we'll get over that, my brother. We've seen a lot of other things, sharing of photos that you are not supposed to share. This is all part of ethical standards and best practice. Thank you. Yes? The mic is in front of you. Close the other mic, please, if you are not using it. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> the next one closer. I am Bogodan Kamaya from the Citizens Debate. Now that we have a very great time in the photo industry, I think professionalism can only make the difference between photographers and anyone who can purchase a smartphone. So Mr. President, I want to know which benchmark are you using to to to, to bring up journalists or to bring up photographer in your industry. And also, if someone wants to be part of the competition, the photography competition, where can he send the photos that he has? Thank you. Any other? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think as we proceed, that you see a lot of bombardment coming up here. You, know. you can go ahead, sir. Yeah. Well, for the competition, I will allow the, the PRO to answer that question for the competition. Yeah, we'll answer for slow session. Okay, for the imaginable things, that is about new technology. We have to accept that phones are here to stay. But like I said earlier, we have to accept and focus on professionalism. But for policies, I think uh, the director have mentioned about what we are going to do in Poloko. I mean, there is going to be a policy on that. How are we going to? How are you going to use your phone, especially when you have wedding? Because what I, what I was thinking before this time is to concentrate on the the, the those who are who, who are going to do the, the coverage. I mean, those who hire the photographer. I mean, there is going to be a legal document between them. But away from that. We've taught them how to package, how to package as a professional. You must have a package, and that is what we lack. Most of our colleagues lack that package because you cannot allow me to go first in the morning, get the shots, and come back at home. Another photographer goes there and take the same shots. At the end of the day, you are not making money. 
Because like who goes first will get that money. So you have a package. I mean, photo shoots, the videos, the, the, stick, the, the stick pictures. That's the package we are trying to, to work on now. When you are, when you are hired by, by, by anybody, you have to present your package. You negotiate. That is professional work. They cannot just come and ask you, I, I, I'm going to work tomorrow, then I want you to go and take photographs. No. And that's what is happening today. So I think it's going to be part of our ethical uh, 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 policies. Let me just focus on the techno technological part. Um, at first, as the director rightly said, we are having camera of score. It was a big camera that you can't move it. It's based at the studio. We are moving with train of things. Now you see photographers having moving camera. At first, for, for, for even passport picture, I said to go to the studio because you cannot take that ball camera and move it to your house or wherever. So you go to the studio or you just call a photographer, come and give some, some snapshot, they possibly do that. And also, um, for somebody asked that there are photographers roaming about the streets. Um, all our membership are based. They either belong to studios or basements. We don't have photographers just roaming about. So most times, if you hire the photographer, it's nice to ask him, excuse me, sir, um, what studio do you belong to? Or can I have your complimentary card? So it will be very easy for you to locate a person. And for the competition, um, this year, the team of World Photo Day is COVID-19 through the lens. Um, we want to showcase activities, COVID-related activities. And also, even in the midst of COVID, there are also developments going on in the county. We also like to know. And the pictures we are taking, we don't need phones now because we are using 300 to 600 megapixels because we're going to blow the pictures up. So if the picture has some low resolution, then your phone will not give us what we're looking for. So the, 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 the pictures of high quality, we need high quality pictures. For instance, um, for instance, if there's a development in the ministry, the ministry open a, a, a studio at a specific place, we want to see those things. We want to see people whether they are observing social distances, people going to churches, cluster, or putting their face masks. We also want to see people in marketplaces, whether they are face masks or not. People attending funeral or weddings, whether they are masks, some are not masks. We also want to see developmental things. I thank you very much. Yeah, thanks yeah. very much. Yeah. We summarize now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the question about the answer. Who? Whether I want to say yes. Okay. Someone. I want to be part of it. Okay. Um. The the well, it was limited to our memberships. Members of the Salon Union of Photographers, registered members. So they know what we're looking for. It was not open to the public. But however, if you have any COVID related picture that you feel you can publicize, I think we accept that. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, in addition to the questions, you know, you have silence with regards to the serious question is that we are aware of the challenges, you know, the, the selfish challenges. You know, technology, every day there is technology improving. Before, like directors like this saying, we have been in with cameras, I've changed from that level. We are aware of the fact that people are using like, their phones with the selfies. Again, we try to see how best we can, you know, upgrade our membership to cope up with the challenges, to innovate. You can take your selfie, but you cannot photoshoot with a selfie. You cannot, you know, play around the photographs with the quality photographs desired for a particular purpose. We know you've got that. You really know you can use your, your selfie, but you use a flight, 
are you using your phone? The quality and the proper picture is challenging. So train them on that. I bet anybody here, uh, if you go to wedding or you know, any activities, you don't use your phone. You hire a photographer, why? Because of the technical now. So mm -hmm. we're trying our level best to see how best we can match the trend of you know, technology to innovate. Whatever challenges we, we, we are facing, it, to innovate on that. Thank you very much. Uh, I will need to wind up now. Uh, let me see it this way. Based on His Excellency's call for human capital development, we've seen that the photo uh, uh, component, the sector there, needs capacity building. That I must say. They are membership, they are well educated, they know the practical aspect, but for instance, if they are competing with other people, to get a contract, for instance, to do identification cards for the all of us students in the country, or to do for Beke. There are certain things you have to have as an experience, that's one. Two, waiting at the paper we get for sure. So we are also thinking of enhancing their educational standards to have accreditation from universities or other colleges to show their handiwork. We see a lot of gap, even in future where they make protocols, some service and scatter and pass engineer. But at the end of the day, not get paper. So to enhance their capacity, we are doing that. And when you come for enhancement of your uh, uh, capacity, then there and then you will study the professional aspect of it. What do I mean? If I call the iris, you should know the iris button. But some people are amateurs that when they take the camera, I say, adjust the iris to this speed and it's measured in halves or thoughts you cannot tell but you are using camera when are they not more for open and i will have the phone now and i say they go you just open but you don't know if i talk about film speed how do you adjust the film speed when somebody is running and you want to take an action photo you will not know because you don't have the professional training so like i said we want to enhance the human development uh, capacity to, to work on technological innovation. What we see now, most photos are photoshopped. And I can tell you as a professional photographer, without putting my camera, the professional camera on auto, I should be able to compose a nice picture without on auto. Manual, then you tell a story. We want to ensure that the new technology is, that is coming now, our photographers can also adjust. For instance, from Camera Oscura now, we are talking about 5D. We are talking about HD. We are talking about 3D. We, now, in fact, in the edit software, we are talking about 3D animation, which is very technical. Using now other things to replicate human beings. All of this is under photography. So that is another thing. Then how do they regulate their membership that is going to be discussed. A million miles starts somewhere. This is why we want to work with them. We see, I mean, most people don't know this. As from when they married, everybody will phone a church. Mm. It's a for he or she is a photographer. Even the graduations, they disturb your graduation ceremonies. Everybody is standing there. So they should have membership that can be identified like journalists with accreditation. All advanced countries, they have a belt, the cross, where you should stand with your photograph or your, your photographic uh, uh, machine. And that's why I tell my <laughs> photographers here, use your zoom to zoom here. But they will come in front, block other viewers from seeing. This is all unethical. But, you know, we are moving gradually. So on that note, I want to thank you very much. I hope the story is home now and we know the significance of how that will enhance our job. Before, when I was working in the print media way back in 1987, BW knows that, we buy films from them. <coughs> from them they buy. For them newspaper get picture, first we go buy from them. But at that time, there was no copyright ownership. Kabago snap for two now, they make them, but now they see when they like, I will go credit, I will go on this. First I know they. So we'll stop the issue of uh, piracy. We'll stop the issue of uh, the copyright law with people before. Mm -hmm. And all of that will help us. Till then, we we'll meet next week. I want to thank you very much for your attention.